Now Sky News has learned that 160 people have died as a result of contaminated blood given to them by the NHS since the infected blood inquiry began in July 2017. Last year alone more than 90 people died and with the final report not expected for about another two years, many victims may not live to see those responsible being held accountable. Our health correspondent Paul Kelso has more. Every bottle in this memorial at the infected blood inquiry carries the name of one of the almost 3,000 people who have died from contaminated blood and blood products since the 1970s. But with every week, their number grows. A point made by Chairman Sir Brian Langstaff as the inquiry resumed hearing evidence in Leeds. We don't have the luxury of time. People continue to suffer. People continue to die. The toll since the inquiry was announced two years ago is revealed by figures seen by Sky News. Since July 2017, 131 people infected by contaminated blood have died in England. In Scotland, 25 people have died. In Wales, two have passed away. The same number is in Northern Ireland. A total of 160 people, or one person, every four days. John Corns came to the inquiry with his son. He's one of the biggest haemophiliac family in Britain, one of seven brothers, six of them haemophiliacs, four of whom, along with his sister-in-law, have died, the last, just 18 months ago. I'm representing uh, my children. I'm representing my deceased brothers. I'm representing my nephews and nieces. They've been through hell. They've got no fathers. There's quite a lot of them. In my family, it's affected about 30 people. Graham Binks told the inquiry his wife Margaret died when their sons were just five and seven, having been infected with hepatitis C from a blood transfusion during childbirth. I told them the truth in the sense that I said their mother had sent a message that she loved them and uh, was sorry she had to leave them. Um, but <clears throat> the white lie I told is I said she told us to be like the three musketeers. So I sat with one each on my knee and, uh, sorry, and we swore an oath of one for all and all for one and sealed it with a small glass of port, uh, even the five-year-old. The inquiry will hear witnesses in Edinburgh and Cardiff next month, but it may take a further two years before it's concluded. Uh, too late for many more victims. Paul Kelso, Sky News.